Hey there, seventh grade. Let's talk about plate boundaries. Let's get rolling through this thing. Do you know that the nation of Iceland is the only place where you can above the uh, waterline in the Mid Atlantic Ridge? It's the only place where you can actually see the Mid Ocean Ridge and the Rift Valley, which is in, my, uh, in the middle of it. You can actually cross a bridge. Mr. Bounds has actually done this very thing. This is the nation of Iceland where the only place where the Mid-Atlantic Ridge is above land. Divergent plate boundaries is where our where ocean floor is generated in the divergent boundary. This is where new ocean floor is created. And that's because of upwelling of magma and convection cells. Let's remember we end up with mid-ocean ridges. We end up with gold with valleys. We end up with subduction where the plates collide. And we end up with volcanoes because of it. This whole section, it just goes into this in greater detail. The whole theory of plate tectonics is so wonderful because it explains so many different features of planet Earth with what is called plate boundaries. For instance, there's a divergent plate boundary over here locally on the Baja Peninsula, where Baja California is separating from mainland Mexico. And the Sea of Cortez is, going, is gradually expanding into a larger sea as the as the uh, peninsula rips apart okay and it eventually turns into the san andreas fault a little bit above higher divergent plate boundaries not only do they create new seafloor they can also occur within a continent itself and when they do we end up what is called a continental rift valley now eventually ocean will form and ocean will flow in there and in fact that's how the atlantic ocean became to be continental rifting now let's talk about another plate boundary called the transform plate boundary. We're aware of these ones because before plate tectonics, we didn't know what the San Andreas Fault was. Now we know it's a plate boundary. We can actually see the mountains and all the different geologic features that being a part of the two different plates generates. One of these is the North American plate and the other one's the Pacific plate and they're rubbing together. When two plates slide past each other in opposite directions, they're sliding past each other, not diverging, not diverging, but, but transform. And when they meet there, it's called a transform plate boundary. The most famous of them all is the local one, the San Andreas Fault. As you can imagine, they don't move very easily. They get stuck, but when they do move, we get earthquakes. And we'll be talking about earthquakes in a week or two. When we're talking about all the different disasters Transform plate boundaries crust is not created like that is in a trans in a uh, in a uh, divergent boundary. It's not destroyed like through the process of seduction. Instead, it's the only boundary where not created or destroyed. Now let's talk about volcanoes. All right, what happens when we get subduction? When there's two plates and they're going to collide, they're going to collide, and one is more dense than the other. The one that's more dense will go under the other one, right? And that's then, then there will be end up being volcanoes form under that other. What type of volcano? It's dependent upon what type of crust. But in each case, the product, the production is the same. All right, so it, there's three different ways that these plates can converge, and it's all dependent upon what type of plates are converging. If you have an oceanic crust and it's converging with continental crust, there'll be subduction, and you'll end up with volcanoes. Same thing if you have uh, oceanic crust colliding with more oceanic crust. You'll still end up with volcanoes. So as long as there's subduction, there will be a volcano in the direction opposite of the, uh, the subduction zone. And they always follow the trench. All right, so wherever the trench is, it's parallel to the trench. Then we've got mountains for when you got two continents and they converge continental plates you end up getting the largest mountains on earth so here's a few slides to go deeper into this very process oceanic crust collides with a continental crust the oceanic crust subducts there'll be what is called a trench a continental trench right here along the around the continental margin and then you'll end up with the, having a volcanic arc that is parallel to the trench and this is because of magma that is uh, that, that basically the oceanic lithosphere ends up melting and then forming a volcanic arc, volcanoes. And also when they actually do move, oftentimes they're stuck, but when they do move, when they do move, sometimes you end up with tsunamis. 
Uh, the, why does this happen? Why does the oceanic plate go under? It's because of subduction, because oceanic plates are more dense and therefore they, they subduct under the less dense continental plate and the thicker continental plate, I might add. Uh, subduction, uh, the process is the same if two oceanic plates meet. The only thing is that the more, the older the oceanic plate, the more dense it is, and the older one subducts under the younger one. And you'll still end up getting volcanic island, uh, chain, but this time there'll be islands, volcanic islands, because it takes, you don't have to go above the actual ocean level. And these are called island arcs. And there's several examples of island arcs, including the nation island of Japan, and also the Aleutian Islands. All right, the Filipino, uh, the Philippines also, is also uh, a part of uh, an island arc that includes Japan of the subduction. Here's a really good map showing that. Here's subduction of uh, oceanic to oceanic right here. So you got your Aleutian Island chain, you got Japan. These are a uh, uh, deep sea trench over here, the Marinaris Trench is the deep sea trench. These are just some examples of these geologic features on Earth or evidence of plate boundaries. Here are your continental margins over here, your continental subduction, and you got the Andes. Here's your Sierra Madre over there with the subduction underneath the uh, uh, Central America, and then over here you've got uh, you've got the uh, the Cascade Mountain Range. Uh, over here we haven't talked about this yet. This is when two continental plates converge. Like over here, you got the Indian plate converging with the Eurasian plate, and what you end up with are the highest mountains on Earth. And then over here you get on two going in this area as well, where you got like the nation of Switzerland and the uh, the Swiss Alps. So continent, continent, convergent boundaries, you don't get volcanoes, but what you get are very big mountains and very popular with mountain climbers. This is because both continental lithosphere is low in density, but very thick, and they have nowhere to go but up. They smash together and go up. Best example for this is the Himalayan mountain range and, and the Mount Everest. India is a plate. It is in collision. You can see a little time lapse video over here. It is now, India is now uh, crashing into the Eurasian plate and forming the, the Himalayan mountains, which are growing a few uh, centimeters per year where they're getting a taller. Uh, in California, we've got all, we've got three different plate boundaries. We've got subduction going on in Northern California, Oregon and Washington showing the Cascades. We've got a transformed plate boundary with the San Andreas Fault and then a divergent plate boundary over here. So we got convergent, transform, and divergent all within a day's drive in California. We get it all. Now, sometimes there is some geologic activity going on inside of plate boundaries. So it's not the plate boundary, but inside a plate boundary. Best example for that can be shown for the island of Hawaii and Yellowstone. So let's talk about volcanism that's not on a plate boundary, but instead it's of something called the hot spot. And that's a plume of hot material that rises through the mantle and hot spot volcanoes erupt when hot material melts to create magma. And a good example for that is the nation of, or the, uh, the, this, uh, the, the volcanic island chain of Hawaii, which is called the Emperor uh, uh, Island Chain. And uh, the newest island is the big island of Hawaii and the plate is moving in this direction away from the hot spot plume. So over here, you got a hot spot plume, a little weak spot in the mantle where you actually have the active volcanism. But as the plate moves, these islands get older, they get older and smaller because of erosion. Eventually, some of the chain ends up actually falling underneath the ocean, the point where you don't see it anymore. The Hawaiian Emperor chain of volcanoes is uh, currently erupting over that particular hot spot. And a lot of the islands are so old that they're no longer above the line of the ocean line. And some of them are about ready to actually subduct into the uh, the Aleutian Trench. Uh, we don't know how many have actually gone, but there's actually some islands. Some of the old islands are actually subducting as we speak into the Aleutian Trench. And I want to do is show this to you. It's, it's not working out as well as I wanted it to. All right. So let's recall how all this works out. This is our hotspot video.
Please get bigger. There we go. Finally, heat's rising. Heat's rising. Remember, the lithospheric plate is moving in that direction. All right, then we get an island chain form. All right, you get an island chain form, but the lithospheric plate is in motion. It's moving. So the hot spot stays in the same spot. Hot spot stays in the same spot. And as the plate subducts and we get erosion going on over there, making the island smaller and smaller. So the hot spot stays in the same space as the lithospheric plate moves away. This is what is called more evidence of plate motion. This is uh, seafloor spreading, continental drift. Why are there volcanoes all summed up into one unifying theory called plate tectonics? I hope this all helped. Bye.